It's been a beautiful day today in New York City. Temperatures averaged 86 degrees in the daytime. As on this Friday afternoon, we'll join you inside from the campus of Hunter College. We're on Lexington Avenue. Welcome inside the Hunter Sportsplex. Here on Facebook Live is the CUNY Men's Volleyball Championship match. Defending champion Baruch is the two seed this year at 17 and 10. They take on the top seeded 19 and 6 Hunter College Hawks. And with that, welcome here to Hunter alongside Paige Band. I'm Ralph Bidnarchik. Remarkably, for the 15th time in the last 17 years, these two teams are meeting in the right to advance to the NCAA tournament to represent the CUNYs. This year, it was Hunter who lost last year that swept through the CUNY regular season page. They did have to defeat Baruch twice in a tough four set battles in both times. And this year, what ended up interesting, both teams higher than usual, high octane offenses that meet here on the floor. Both of these teams and both of their matches hit over 300. That is an unheard of number to have at the team stat, which just means that they're highly efficient players across the front row. So it's gonna be a real big challenge on these blockers to shut them down early if either team wants a shot at the title tonight. And Hunter came back motivated. They brought back nine returners and then added some terrific freshmen, including the CUNY Player of the Year all the way from LA in Matisse Lee Marrick. Matisse has just been bringing so much high IQ and a great effective middle, which is something that all teams really wish for. He's nationally ranked at number one in CUNY in hitting and blocks. So there, it's going to be on Baruch to shut him down really early so that way he doesn't get to go on a tear like he can. And last year's tournament MVP tore it up. Jack Centeno, 26 kills. This year, he has been dealing with some health issues, but Centeno certainly back as a major talent. Yeah, Jack is a highly motivated leader for this team, and even though he's facing injury, he's also becoming a better decision maker. He's going to be unpredictable. It's going to be that much harder for Hunter to shut him down. And his leadership ability alone is, going to what, is what's going to bring the energy on this team. So, huge match tonight between both teams. Hunter looking to defeat Baruch for the third time this season. Never easy with the winner advancing to next week's NCAA tournament. First serve is coming up next on Facebook Live. Twenty twenty two twenty three CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First, Health Insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Here we go with the latest installment of Hunter versus Baruch in the CUNY Men's Volleyball Championship match. Baruch, the defending champions, they were the preseason favorite. 17 and 10, Hunter 19 and 6. They went 14 and 0 through CUNY play, sweeping through. Ralph Pinorchik alongside Paige Mand. Let's introduce our two teams. Hunter, the top seed this year, nine returners, bringing back eight players that played in the final last year. For Baruch, little subtle difference. How Shinhu outside, along with Arjun Osmanaj, announces the starter, not Jack Centeno. We'll certainly talk about that. Higgins, a terrific middle in the blocking game, along with Akil Vaughn, 6'7", dual sport athlete. Andrew Obanwa was second team all CUNY this year. Defeng Hong was terrific, running a 6'2 offense. He's the front row center. And Jonathan Liao, terrific libero. Three years ago was the CUNY libero of the year during his time at CCNY. For Hunter and second year coach Chris Shortchin, both years he's been CUNY Coach of the Year. His center is Cooper Moran, back as a two-year starter, first team all-league. Sergio Aguado, a Spaniard, is the libero of the year. Andrew Estevern is the right side. Matisse Lee Marrick is in the middle with Nairo Osborne, Ted Kim, and David Liu, both starters back at the pin hitter position for Hunter. The two teams combining for 19 players, 17 players that played in last year's championship match. There's great experience here, Paige, as we teased. There's a lot of firepower statistically and a great crowd on hand. 
these teams are going to be really exciting. Everyone likes to watch some good offense, and I'm thinking that both of these teams scouted real heavy about their offense, which means we should get great blocks. I personally love a block. I think that is the most exciting thing that you can do in a game. So I'm excited to see how they're going to play this one out. Service errors especially play Baruch in their regular season losses. They say start one with, with one here. They're in the Navy on Navy. Hunter white on white with yellow trim. So Baruch has a tendency to want to serve really hard, which I completely understand. It's highly competitive. You want to make a tough serve. However, in their last meeting against Hunter, they gave up essentially 16 points over the course of that match from missed serves. Swing outside, tipping deep corner, Ted Kim, and Ted Kim will come up with the kill. And Hunter at 2-0, our up official. As first, we'll take a look at the replay. That was just really smart playing. He sees the blocks right there, so he's pushing it far enough out that it's forcing like a last-minute hand decision on the back row defender. Han will set it up outside, and this one not coming back. Kill on the outside for Baruch and Andrew Ubanwa, redshirt sophomore right side out of Fort Hamilton High School in Brooklyn. That was a great hit. Uh, forced Nairo to step outside of his stance in order to try and dig that, and it worked in Baruch's favor. Bearcats with Naoki Tani, a native of Tokyo, Japan. He splits the libero position with Jonathan Liao in a top tandem in the conference. Little roll shot there from Ted Kim. Fourth in CUNY, hitting 285. He had a first team all CUNY year last year. Not this year, 3-1. What I'm seeing is that Hunter's starting a little soft in their hitting. So they're not hitting super strong right off the bat. It's almost like they're trying to find their rhythm and find holes and pockets because they expect the block to be there. Hunter Moran, short serve. Out of system swing, Ted Kim. 3-1 Hunter start, Akil Vaughn able to push it off the block of Lee Marrick. That was a great tool, just using the block for your advantage. He had great timing on that and found a great spot. Akil Vaughn is a sixth year senior, finished up playing for the CUNY defending champion now, Baruch men's basketball team. They are 11 and two with the big guy there, as there is Lee Marrick blocked on the outside by Ubanwa. That was just such a beautiful box. They said blocks are what's gonna bring some energy to these teams, because you're gonna be able to shut down the defense, and Higgins was right there with them. Great setup. Vaughn on the service, Moran, outside, cross court, sharp cross court from Ted Kim. They're really, Baruch is pulling their outside blocker to block Matisse. So it puts them a little bit out of position when it comes to those really sharp hits. So that would have actually been, your front row outside hitter would have likely been in position to take that in any other scenario. But they're really focused on Matisse, which is understandable. Ted Kim went for 16 kills, 464, and 12 digs in the most recent meeting. April 1st, but there Ted got his feet all tangled up and commits a service error. He stepped over the line for all first set. They're certainly keeping it competitive. Baruch running their 6-2 offense most of the season. Describing head coach Alex Mule in his first year, what a job he has done. Taking over both Baruch men's and women's programs as there is Cooper Moran that will go up and win the dump there, he is able to win it off of Higgins. Yeah, I mean, he went right through that block. Higgins hadn't penetrated enough over the net, so he found the hole right in between Higgins and the net. Matisse Lee Marrick, first team all city in Los Angeles last spring. Outside the swing, big block put on by Cooper Moran. Free ball for Hunter, Moran, back set. Back row attack, Lee Marrick. You can't leave Lee without, you can't leave him without a block. Even if he's coming from the back row, I would have expected some hands to go up with him. That was still a low enough hit, definitely someone could have blocked, but they, it was a great job by Hunter to misdirect the block.
Lee Merrick goes six foot six. Nice low serve, free ball comes his way. Moran, combination run, David Liu, handled by Liao, Higgins pushes. Free ball for the Bearcats, trying to take advantage. Uman now setting. Swing with the left came from Osmanaj, and that'll be a kill for Arjun Osmanaj. 6'2 freshman, lefty on the outside. When a lefty's playing outside, it's incredibly difficult to block. You're just not used to blocking for that angle. It's the same thing almost as a right side player, a right handed player playing on the left side. So Osmanaj got the first rotation. He has been pretty close and played a lot with Jack Centeno, as we've talked about, dealt with injuries. He's missed a total of six full matches this year, and we have yet to see him to open up this championship match. There's the block, one-on-one, -on -one. Defeng Han, 6'2 redshirt sophomore from Brooklyn. That was a beautiful block, and I think this is coming down to David not really taking full swings. So even though the block was right there in front of him, he didn't swing over it, you know, and hit maybe a line shot to the deep court. And poor first contact by Kim. Still getting a decent swing was Lou. Han outside, there is Haoshin Hu, 6'5", sophomore from China, that has perhaps some extra motivation. The Baruch program felt that he may have been snubbed from being all-conference. Baruch, I think, felt a few of their players were snubbed this year, and they're showing a lot of talent here tonight, so they're definitely coming out firing. But I'm seeing Baruch taking real full swings, and Hunter's been holding back a little bit. 3-0 run by the Bearcats. Osmanaj, tough serve. And this will be Moran. That will get called for the net violation. That's our up official, Denny Suspedis, who worked the Olympics as an official in the men's volleyball event in Beijing. Down official, Mr. Paul DeCurtis. Got two experienced reps. It's not going to stop these players from fighting them on those calls, though. Lou, and there is Higgins on the block along with Han. That was a beautiful block. Baruch's clearly tracked their players, and they're closing those blocks. It's giving the outsides really nowhere to go. I mean, that was, they were just right there, and they're doing great penetration, penetration hitting, keeping the ball down and in. Osmanaj is done off the service line. One other unique note about the two regular season meetings between these two, as we see Chris Shortchin, apropos that we're showing him, Shortchin did not use a timeout in hotly contested, a pair of hotly contested four setters in each of those matches. That is just so rare to never see a timeout used by a coach in volleyball as Moran to miss the service error, but that's how much faith Page he has in his veteran team to self-correct. I have found you'll see coaches call a timeout come the maybe third, but usually like maybe the fourth, fifth, sixth miss point where they feel like their team is not self-correcting. Usually those first two or three points, I would expect a coach to give their players an opportunity to fight back. And clearly in those matches, they had to be pretty contested and close or Hunter was in the lead. And so they had no reason to call a timeout, but it's definitely a, a sign of how Hunter's gonna fight through this current deficit. How Shin Hu out of Edward R. Murrow High School in Brooklyn. After growing up in China, who is just seeing that block and Hunter is not closing the block, so he has an open window that he's going to take advantage of every time. He's coming off of 13 kills against a good John Jay program that's grown a lot recently to win yesterday's semifinal. I just want to note it. I hate mistakes. They are the one stat I cannot stand. Osborne, that's a good serve. Liao got on it. Chance to organize. Osborne with second contact. Now Lee Marrick still out of system. Estevern with the swing. Lou setting up Kim, and that's going to be a kill out of system. Ted Kim, a six foot junior, a springy six foot from Little Neck, New York, and Queens. 
That was a beautiful hit off an offset, but that's what I would expect from an outside. An outside knows that they're not going to always get beautiful sets, so they're ready to hit at anything. I'd like to see Nero not hop so much on defense. He gets very hoppy, and these balls are too hard driven to add any more energy to them. Estevern. And it would not go for Andrew Estevern, a freshman out of Elmont in Nassau County. So Baruch's lead is two. 12-10, they took the lead at 7-6 via a 3-0 run. And early numbers, remember we talked about all the high-octane offense that we saw in the regular season from both sides. Baruch at 286, Hunter now at an even triple zero. Moran, Estevern. I mean, Baruch has been doing such a great job of shutting down the outsides, and the outsides are like your number one target spot when you're out of system. Baruch is doing a great job dominating this match. It may not feel like it with the score, but the eye test is saying they are dominating the match at the net, at the service line, and keeping it covered on defense. Andrew Ubanwa with the latest kill. Float serve from Tanny. Kim. That one popped around. Hunter content to play on. Kim. And then Kim will finally terminate. Ted Kim had a huge match at Baruch in Hunter's win, where he had 16 kills, hitting 464 April 1st. I mean, that's just a beautiful shot. Ted Kim clearly saw that he had an opening with only one blocker. An outside hitter rarely has just one blocker. So he's going to take advantage of that. And he had a great cross-court shot. Hunter Moran. Liao, perfect pass. And Vaughn. Just a little miscommunication there on the takeoff. And Akil Vaughn is about to wallop it. And it's a one-point first set. That was a beautiful set by Han. I'll say that. You know, it's so hard to set middle. Middles have a lot of responsibility on the court. Anybody that knows that, they'll know. A middle's going to have the quickest offense and be everywhere on defense. After an overpass, but Teddy Kim missed the back line. You know, I have probably a more controversial opinion when it comes to free balls like that. You know, I'm someone that's like, go up and block it but a lot of people like to go up and hit it, and then that happens. That's less likely to happen if you went up and blocked it, but. There is Ted Kim redeeming himself. The 16 kills at Baruch. He had 10 kills, four aces in the first meeting, too. So he has proven to be effective in this matchup. They're finding, so Baruch is playing their middles in position five, which is usually where you'd actually see a libero for this very reason. Hunters outside hitters are hitting cross-court shots. Middles typically don't have the greatest defense. So putting them in a position where they're playing the most amount of defense is definitely a more difficult setup. Tough serve from Kim. And then eventually pushing it down the line. Baruch will get the kill. There's Jack Centeno on the floor for the first time, immediately delivering. I mean, that's what you got to do. That's your job as a leader, and as you know, he's proving why he's the player for this team and why he continues to lead and motivate this team. He did not play yesterday in the CUNY semifinal against John Jay. David Liu then trying to hit over the double block, and he is able to tool the block off of Michael Higgins. He tooled the block and continued, like I said, they're eyeing that position five and a little bit into position four but they're really hitting a really strong cross-court shot i imagine that baruch if they want to fill that hole they're going to have to get better coverage in that corner matisse lee marrick tanny perfect pass centeno it missed so if you're jack centeno he is page dealing with some shin splits he's only been healthy for about three weeks of the season what is that like as a former player? I had shin splints for a brief period of time, and it hurts every single time you jump. Every time your foot leaves the floor and has to hit the floor again in some kind of pressure situation, it hurts because the vibrations are coming up from your foot, hitting your shins first, and then the rest of your leg. 
So he's putting in that effort every single time he's jumping for a block, for a hit, which is where all of his power is coming from. He's feeling it every time. So it's really going to show how much he's pushing through that and how the team is rallying around him in order to allow him to have those breaks so he doesn't have to carry the team on his back. Lee Marrick commits the service error. And Baruch and Hunter are tied at 16. Now late in the first set, Centeno will remain on for rotation. So as Alex Mueller has described it, he is so unbelievably motivated. This team knows what Jack Centeno is going through. Big block by Osborne. Free ball coming Hunter's way. Moran in the middle. They go for Lou. There was Centeno back row. Who with the swing? Joust for Moran. Who the chase down? And then out of system. That's four contacts against Baruch prior to the swing by Defend Han. I mean, that was a great rally for both sides on this particular time. I mean, great way of keeping their eyes on the court and keeping their eye on the ball for all the plays that were really close to the net, really easy to get tangled up in each other. I mean, just really great team play. Tough serving, Cooper Moran. Now Moran sets, here's Lou. And they run the combination, David Lou. They learned he was coming back for a fifth year late in the summer of 2022. Chris Shorten says he is still the smartest hitter in the program. Timeout taken by Baruch. Hunters put together a run, and they lead by two. This is what we were talking about, where the Hunter coaches trust their team to fight their way back. So here's what they're doing. They're fighting back. I mean, that's just such a beautiful... Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today.
2022-23 CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First, health insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. Celebration underway for the Baruch College Bearcats, officially three-time defending CUNY champions. This group goes back-to-back. -back. Previous group, last one in 2019, and the Bearcats are returning to the NCAA tournament. Dropped the opening set. Took extra points to take the second, 27-25, pretty comfortably in sets three and four. As Baruch holds Hunter to 120 hitting for the night. Baruch at 180 for the evening. Jack Centeno was terrific again. 12 kills, hit just 100, but he had key swings as the Bearcats once again relied on him. He is on the floor now with Paige. Jack, how are you feeling after tonight's match? Honestly, just so proud of my team and just honestly a relief. It was a great game. We came in here 2-0 uh, against them, or 0-2 against them. And uh, we want everyone on our team just wanted to leave it all on the court today, and I think we were able to do that. Can you describe how your team was able to step up and support you? I know that you've been having a bit of a season, so everyone else was able to really rally around you and produce this win. I mean, all in practice, we, we talked about who's going to step up in the big moments. Uh, we've, we've been practicing for these type of moments. You know, who's going to step up? I mean, Ari and Arjen, two freshmen who didn't get as much playing time this season, stepped up, played great. Other people just came through when I couldn't, and everyone was just ready to have my back. And that was something we preached for, like, the last two weeks since we lost them. Thank you so much, Jack. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. Jack Santeno, the emotion on his face. And his teammates, as he said, did deliver big time. Akil Vaughn, seven kills, was a monster at the net. Hao Shin Hu led the way with 15, hit 324. And then Centeno had so much on his plate, also with 10 digs. Alex Mule, first year head coach of Baruch, now a champion, is standing by with Paige. Um, as a team, we were just working, like, watching film every single day the last few weeks. Um, team stretches, team lifts, um, emphasizing just getting one ball at a time, and it's just a great moment right now. What did you say after the loss in set one? It was 25-20. How did you motivate them to pull through for three straight sets? I said that we weren't winning in transition, and we had to get the third ball. Had to be aggressive. We couldn't give them free balls. And when the ball was coming back over the net, we were winning them 50-50 matchups. Certainly got more aggressive. Great job by your whole team. Congratulations. Thank you. Alex Mule, now a champion for the Baruch College Bearcats. They make it five straight wins as they go into the NCAA tournament. And they win on Hunter's home floor in the latest chapter of this rivalry. Trophy presentation is coming up. And we saw the depth of Baruch shine throughout. Centeno barely plays first set. Arjun Osmanaj on the floor first. Later, third and fourth sets. His twin brother, the third middle of the team, Ari Osmanaj. Huge, huge match in favor of Michael Higgins, who was second in the conference in blocks coming in. But we saw Ari Osmanaj step up big there. Naoki Tani as well. The DS with strong serving. And this closes the book on the Hunter Hawks. Could advance into the ECAC tournament. That's the Division Three version 
of the NIT. They're 19 and seven, and they take their first loss in Cuties, and a bitter one to take for Chris Shortchin and his team, nine returners that came back at a super talented freshman class. And experience like Nairo Osborne, who are graduating and finishing up. Grad students like Raymond Yu and especially David Liu that are going to be done in their careers. For Hunter, it's another appearance in the final, but yet they're still looking for their first championship since 2018. Hunter took the opening set 25-20 and looked like they would be on their way. And even still, Page Band, late in the second set, it looked like the Hawks were okay. What went wrong? Baruch started really pushing their offense to be in transition to win at the net. And Hunter couldn't really find an answer for that. So as I'm watching this match, and you're talking about great defense and great playing, everybody on the Baruch side was ready to step up. And that's what they did. I mean, it was great effort from the entire team to pull off this win. Now the Bearcats will receive their championship medals and lift the trophy. Last year they went 16 and 13. They had to do it a little bit of a different way because there was a half 2020 season, no 2021 season. So Baruch and Hunter, they both had nearly entirely new rosters last year. This matchup had all the experience and the storyline of the rematch, particularly for these two players, these two teams with players both on the floor having experienced it. And it is Baruch that did not look rattled during some tough times. And that will bring home another trophy. It's the program's 13th championship trophy. Hunter's still number one with 17, but don't look now. The Bearcats are knocking on the door towards dethroning the Hawks for total CUNY championships. I mean, as we've talked about throughout the entire broadcast, both of these teams have gone back and forth. They're really up here at the top of CUNY, constantly fighting it out. Akil Vaughn at six foot seven, fitting the tallest guy. He gets to raise the trophy, and the Bearcats celebrate. They've taken a set apiece from Stevens twice and NYU, and they could be a very tough out for a national seed in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Congratulations to the Baruch College Bearcats. This group goes back to back, their third straight title going back over the last five years. Baruch defeats Hunter in four sets tonight. For our entire crew, our producer, Mark Brano, director, Dan Lippenholtz, my partner, Paige Band, an absolute pleasure. My name is Ralph Gnorchik, saying so long and good night from the Hunter Sportsplex in Lexington Avenue, where Baruch defeats Hunter to capture the CUNY Men's Volleyball Championship on Facebook Live.